I'm Mira Carlton. And I'm Dr. Jason Carlton. And welcome to Carlton Nutrition TV and our show, In Depth, uh, where we explore the stories behind the leaders, visionaries, and innovators changing the world. And today we have a very special guest, somebody who's done all of those things and is doing all of those <laughs> things. But before we introduce you to him, we're going to go over just a few um, updates. Okay, basically I don't have that many updates this week. All I just want to do is let everyone know that you know that we have other shows to watch. And one that I'm really excited about is Treadmill Talk. And if you haven't watched that yet, that's where we completely geek out on nutrient science. So if you haven't yet seen it, make sure to tune in so you can see what when we pick apart the studies and the headlines that are making the news. Um, I think that's what we've been dying to do a show like this so that we can actually blow you know some of those headlines out of the water. Yeah, so just so you, you, everybody understands what we're saying, we have two <laughs> other shows uh, besides In Depth. We've got um, House Calls, where we answer the questions that you send in to us. Uh, and then we have one called Treadmill Talk, where we really walk you through this week's nutritional headlines. And we do it from our treadmill desks, which is why it's called Treadmill Talk. So check those two shows out if you haven't had a chance to yet. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this interview, because we're very excited about this interview. This, this person is a personal friend of ours. But not only that, let me just tell you a little bit about his He's, pretty awesome. He's a pretty awesome guy. <laughs> He's a former strategic advisor to the food and beverage industry. Abel now, and this person we're talking about is Abel James, and of course his name is probably familiar to you. And his voice, if not his voice, most definitely is familiar <laughs> to you. He now acts as a consumer advocate um, who exposes the truth behind deceptive marketing practices, misleading corporate propaganda, and powerful special interests that have accelerated the worldwide obesity uh, epidemics and health crisis. He, uh, within the first year, Abel's show, The Fat Burning Man, rose to number one in the United States and in the United Kingdom. And that is quite a feat. That's really amazing. Yeah, if you have such an incredible audience. If you haven't heard his show yet, you definitely want to tune in and, and do that. But it also rose to the charts, on the top of the charts, in seven other countries and has stayed there for the past two years. Now, Abel is also a number one best-selling author. He's a top ten app developer, a musician, an entrepreneur, an all-around great guy. Welcome to the show, Abel. Thanks so much for having me, guys. It's always a pleasure to hang out. Is it weird when other people start talking about you and you start doing so many other people's shows now as opposed to you always doing the intros? <laughs> I do enough of other shows. It's weird. Like I probably do more other shows than I do of my own. So oh, I'm wow. I'm pretty I'm ready to rock. Okay, really? and we're gonna throw some different things at you because most people know Abel James and they know what he's really involved in in his work and what you know so what a lot of the people are talking about his his different apps and his book and his you know his diet and all that and we sort of decided to throw that all out the window because well everyone's done that so <laughs> I think we're just gonna bug our buddy here and um, ask him some personal questions. Okay, what do you got? Let's start with <laughs> question one. Why did you start your company? Uh, kind of, why did you begin down the path that you're on now? So those are two actually different questions because the company kind of came later. So I'll start with the second one. How about that? Okay. So for me, it was. Um, I'll give the short story. Is basically I was I was tricked by the wrong information for too long, and I felt burned by it. You know what I mean? So like, I, what I mean by that is. Um, my doctor, fitness magazines, diet books, and uh, pretty much every TV show out there taught me something about my health that turned out to make me fat and sick. The, the more I followed that advice, and I'm someone who, you know, wants to perform at the highest level all the time, and so to be trying that hard and getting such poor results, <laughs> and then finding out that it was because I was trying so hard following that advice that I was getting those poor results, that was yeah. something that was really, really frustrating to me. And I felt like I was duped, um, which I was actually. And so uh, once I kind of figured out the actual truth about how to be fit and feel awesome, uh, I, I found out that it was really easy and straightforward. And I'm like, people deserve to know this stuff. And so I decided just to spread the word. I wanted to do something cool with my life, something that would affect the world in a really interesting way and, and kind of like guide the ship uh, in the right direction because I think we can all agree that things, especially when it comes to health, are not going particularly well these days. So I wanted to play my, my role in trying to improve that and tell my own story and help other people who were uh, you know, in the position that I was in before, and there were a lot of them, and, and try to get them the right advice so that they can actually live the life of their dreams. And then my company, uh, as a part of that, 
doesn't just publish my own work, but also I don't want to be my own bottleneck and I don't want my own story to kind of like clog the arteries of getting the word out there. Um, so I help other people publish uh, digitally online and, and bring their message to the many people who need it. And so people who don't necessarily know the ins and outs of, of marketing like a big book publisher or something might. Um, I try to help those people who need that that tech savvy person in the middle to help the little guys reach pretty much everyone because the truth is you don't need a huge TV network as you guys well know or a big book publisher or anything else to reach people you just need that one little thing that allows you to you know open up all those doors so I, I try to be that not just for for myself and our own content but for other people too and it's a lot of fun yeah, and yeah. you're reaching a ton of people with yours, but then the, name some of the other people that you're currently helping get out there. I know that you had an amazing app this year that yeah. has done incredibly well. <laughs> totally, yeah. So um, one of the apps was with my buddy uh, George Bryant of Civilized Caveman. He has terrific paleo recipes. Um, actually did an app with uh, my fiance Allison as well uh, on gluten free so desserts. <laughs> if people do not know her yet, she is just like, I love her. She is the cutest and we all had dinner recently and just had an amazing time. Thanks Mira. She's the best. She loves you guys too. <laughs> and then we, we've done um, a lot of you know, I'm, I'm very communal with my content and, and products that we put out there and stuff like that. So um, I've done stuff with Dave Asprey, Bulletproof Exec, uh, Jonathan Baylor, Sarah Gottfried, Pedram Shojai, <laughs> you guys, pretty much everyone. Like, I, I just, if they're good people and they're on, um, if they're the good guys, essentially, yeah. then I'll, I'll partner up and do something fun and, and try to spread the message as best we can. One that I'm really excited about um, is Terry Walls and she's launching her book uh, in March so right now we're working really hard redesigning her whole website and um, getting a launch plan together with some cool giveaways and other stuff so that's it's been a lot of fun for us to do that because her story is powerful it's amazing yeah. we actually talk a lot with Terry because we both bring it down in the micronutrients that both caused us to be sick and the micronutrients that both caused us to get better so it, she, we're gonna have her on very shortly as well oh. so yeah we're all gonna push to get her out there yeah, it is nice. Cool. You really talk. There's a collaborative going on out there right now within the community that we're all kind of part of. And if so, if you're watching right now or wondering who some of these people are and don't know who the, they are, we will be having almost all Everybody of those people <laughs> on uh, in depth eventually. So you will get a chance to to know them a little bit. So next question: uh, What did you discover new about yourself this year? Ah, uh, what a good question. <laughs> I I would say. I perform at my best when I'm not doing everything myself and that's something that I've probably known for a long time but this year I'm really trying to focus on that as much as I can because it's I realized with the amount of like stuff that's coming my way every single day that it's not um, it's not good service to the rest of the world if I'm focusing on like all of that random stuff that's coming it's it's best if I focus on the things that I really do well which is I think taking super intense research and like all of that nerdy stuff that's bouncing around my brain and communicating it in a way um, that people understand in a way that's interesting and kind of hooks you in and gets you excited about actually doing something because it doesn't matter how much you know it's all about what you do and what you believe and so I try to bridge that gap as best I can borrowing from what I learned when I used to you know act and play music full-time professionally as a musician and then going on to consulting and learning how the business world works I try to like take all of those things and help that inform what I do now and that's what you know <laughs> makes my my show and my interviews the way that they are because they're sometimes all over the place you don't know what you're gonna get <laughs> That sounds like a recipe for success, and it is. It's one of the hard things when you yeah. build a company like what you've done and what so many of us have done in the community. It's when do you get out of your own way? When do you start to really um, not do everything? And that's it's yeah. type A personalities. We all have a little bit of a hard time giving up some of that, but I think like just like you said, like once you do, it makes it so you can actually do your actual work that you're here to do so much better. Exactly. Okay. Pay attention to the job that I'm supposed to be here to do. Yeah. Well, what, way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> we want to know what's the favorite. What's your favorite part of your job? What do you love doing every day? What do you look forward to? I love learning. That's easy. So easy for me. I've always been someone who just like soaks up as much information as I can, like a sponge. So uh, it's been really cool. Every few weeks, I have a new little pet project 
that I'm working on. I might be learning some new like biochemical pathway or a new style of exercise, but a lot of, a lot of times it's completely outside of like health and nutrition, at least in the literal sense. It's more in like the metaphysical side or like what's coming uh, in the future. Right now, I'm totally geeking out on technology. I'm like measuring all my biometrics right now. <laughs> I'm measuring uh, productivity on the way that I use tabs on my Chrome browser. And so like I'm using a bunch of different apps. I'm using meditation apps. I have Google Glass and I'm using that to do all sorts of different things. So it's, it's kind of like right now I'm focusing on learning what's coming in the future and seeing how best we can use those tools to really enact change in, in a different cool way. Because I think a lot of the things that we're worried about right now um, won't necessarily be solved by technology, but new problems will pop up because of that technology that we really need to be focusing upon. So instead of like squabbling around the horizon of all the little details that are going on right now, um, I really like the idea of trying to envision what five to ten years uh, away from now looks like because I think we can all agree that we're probably not going to be looking down at our phones like this for very much yeah. longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, and something else is coming. We just don't really know what it is. So right now yeah. I'm trying to figure out what that looks like. Well, our favorite new, our favorite toys are our treadmill dust because with how much time we're all spending sitting down, and a fr our friend Anoop actually does a lot of research on this, it's yeah. so bad for your body. So, I mean, that's one of our favorite new geek out toys, and it's not that new, but it just, you know, gives you a way to move forward with the technology that's coming. We all have to be at our computers, but at least it allows us a way to still tr to trudge like the, uh, like the people in Papua New Guinea did as well all day long. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm standing up right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then this offers obviously the other half of that. What's your least favorite thing to, about your job? <laughs> uh, probably all those little details right now. It, it's To be honest, it's the fear of letting people down because I, I'm sure you guys can relate to this. Literally, I get probably 400, 500 plus emails a day. And, um, and it, most of them are from people who listen to my show or... Uh, you know, coaching clients or people who have purchased my apps or products or whatever, and they all, or, or tweets or Facebook and all the rest of it too, and I, I really want to get back to absolutely everybody, but like I said before, um, like I literally don't have enough time to be able to do that, and so there needs to be some sort of um, sacrifice on my own part. As much as I'd like to get back to absolutely everybody, it's physically impossible for that sort of thing to happen, so I think that's that's the thing that I hate about my job is that I can't do that for absolutely everybody. I'd love to clone myself and do everything on my own, but obviously that's that's not possible. But who knows? Maybe five to ten years from now will be. <laughs> That'll be what you're discussing. That that's gonna be your week project. I'm gonna go clone exactly. myself. <laughs> Uh, that is a big problem. I mean, Mira and I, we're lucky that we have, the, obviously, the two of us. We do try to get back to everybody. But I say to some people sometimes, you know, I think I probably care more about your health than it seems like you care about your health. You know, yeah. when you're a healthcare provider like we are and you are as well, you really are, you get vested in these people and you want to see them do well. And it is, it's hard when they aren't getting better, they don't put the effort out, or like you say, you just don't have the time to get back to them. So we can definitely relate with that. Uh, oh, here's a fun one. Yeah. Oh, next one? Yeah. All right. Now, we were out with you and Alex. You guys are so cute, by the way. We know, <laughs> we know what it's you like. It's easy when you're like, it's like, hi, honey. <laughs> yeah, here, you know, this is just, you know, us sitting around the, around the studio. Um, so we, we were out to dinner with you the other day, which we mentioned, although we were at the other side of the table, so we didn't get a chance to, to talk with you as much as we'd like to. But we want to know what is your favorite food. Now, it can't be a food like a health food. It's got to be kind of a... A cheap food, healthy, or it could be healthy, but it has to be like kind of a, a fun favorite food. Chocolate, I know easy. You love food because you guys ordered like every single dish <laughs> on the menu. No joke. <laughs> what yeah, doing? that's that's what we do. It's incredible to be able to like get together with a bunch of friends and just have a feast. That's like my favorite thing. Growing up, I'm from a small town in New Hampshire, I have like 30 cousins on my dad's side. It's an old farming family, so they always wanted extra hands around the farm. So I just have a huge family and. Almost everything we do together involves food and feasting, and so I, I really like bringing that um, to our everyday life too. So, in terms of actual foods, um, right now Allison has like two or three different kinds of cookies upstairs that are going. It smells amazing in here. So, I would say some sort of baked good. It looks different every week. Sometimes it's cheesecake, other times it's rum balls, um, sometimes it's cookies, brownies. Usually it has something to do with chocolate and a nut butter of some kind. That's that's what I'm really into. And the fattier the better. I'm totally into that. 
So yeah. between her and George, you are completely set up on the on the desserts that are nutty and chocolatey. <laughs> I got my bases covered. Absolutely. Um, so what's next? Okay, if you could do any other job, so you're not gonna do the Fat Burning Man show, we'd all miss your voice. But and you're not gonna, you know, help us all get the word out about health and nutrition, what would you be doing for a career? I think being an astronaut would be pretty cool. We know some. We could <laughs> introduce <Yeah. laughs> Maybe you can hook me up then. We'll see. I think yeah, you know, if if you want to rethink your life and see what would be cool as an alternative, I think it has to be totally different, right? Because like I could say, oh, being a professional musician, but I've already kind of done that and I know what it's like and who knows, I might go back to it. Um, and so I think we can we can all do more than we imagine we possibly could because I could shut everything off right now and then just go do something else. Um, yeah, but being an astronaut probably isn't one of those things that I could do, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm telling you, our friend did it. She was the first female. Um, Anusha and sorry, she went up in uh, in, the, in, the, in Russian the Russian rocket. Tours. So cool. Yeah, and she went up and hung out in the space center and came back. So she sent she, us. She showed us all the videos. And she said it was just amazing. Like really, though, she said the first wow. thing of looking down to Earth. She said, that, "I just remember her saying this to us was the." The, you could not imagine why anyone would fight. It was that beautiful to look at. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. See, that sounds worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good aspiration. She's a young. She's a young woman, so you can definitely. It's a. It's a expensive trip to take, but they'll take you. Cool. All right. Our next trip is to space. <laughs> We're going. Hey, that's. A good job. <laughs> so, so that was the other job. All right. So. Now we're going to talk about you know things that kind of just bother you, and so this <laughs> is what's your least favorite word. Did you say least favorite word? Word, yeah. Can't. Wow. It's uh, when <laughs> when people say things to me, and this actually comes back. We went over that whole like color code personality test, right? One word that I that just kills me is is can't because people will ask me so often like, how did you do what you do, or or how do you you know build a business, or how do you get healthy, or whatever, and people will. I'll give that advice and people will say, well, I can't do that or I don't have the time for that. And it's like, <laughs> of course you have the time for that. Like yeah. those those excuses, maybe it's a set of words, right? Like don't can't, like don't have time. I think don't have time is one of my favorites, my favorite worst sense. words or worst yeah. concepts because it's just so untrue. If you look at the great achievements that that women and men have made over the course of time, We've all had exactly the same amount of it, and so, uh, yeah, that that just drives me crazy because it's so untrue, and it seems so easy to me that people would be able to see that it's untrue. But I don't know. A lot of people still have, uh, they still use those words quite often, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. and so true you said. Now, what colors were you? If for people watching again, we're talking about this. There's something called cool. ColorCode.com, I think. We were at a Mindshare Summit, and you answer a series of questions, and you keep in mind yourself when you were a child while you're answering them. And then it gives you these color combinations that you are, and they stand for different things, leadership or fun. or. And we didn't expect of... much out of it going in. We are kind of like, eh, it's one of those little quizzes. You take it, whatever. Yeah. And it was actually really informative. So we'll put a link down because there's actually a free one, abbreviated one. Yeah. That you can yeah. It's, and it's, just pretty, it's really yeah. good to like sort of learn about yourself and continue this growth, not just in nutrition with us, but to learn a little bit about you emotionally as well and yeah. what drives you. Yeah. So what were you, Abel? Well, so I'm actually fairly balanced, but it's definitely red with a, a big heap of yellow. And then the rest of it is kind of you know, fairly equal, but I, I think that sounds about right. And yeah. the way that, that Allison explained it is that I'm red during the week and yellow on the weekends, and I think that sounds about right. That's, That's a right. good balance. Yeah. I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm red and yellow also. I can um, see that. But, there's none, but I was very, I was very, very short on the other color. <laughs> Were you really? White. I had no, no white. white. No Not white. white. <laughs> So, and again, some of the people <laughs> watching, there's four colors. I, would, by the way, was red and blue, and then had a mix of the other two colors. No. And two reds are not supposed to get along as in right. there. Um, yeah. They're supposed to be too intense. Lucky but... we work all the time, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and then when we're not working... We're slightly we're not, driven. Yeah. Slightly. But, so I'm going to ask a different one. What is, what is your favorite word? My favorite word? Yeah. Do you have a fun favorite word? <laughs> I think fun is definitely up there. Love is a really good one. Yeah. 
Because you're in love now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. But you can also love what you do, and you can love so many things that are out there. Uh, gratitude is a great word, but it's a little too clunky, so I think love sums it up pretty well. But it's, it's those words that don't really have negative connotations, right? Like fun. Who has a problem with the word fun? Yeah. I think love could be a little bit problematic, so fun is probably my... My favorite, and it's one that I need to, as a red, need to constantly remind myself to like insert that into my day or my habits, because if you leave me to my brothers, I'll probably just work all of the time. So we need to like find ways to get that fun in there. I, I literally, um, in my calendar, I have fun, and it has its own color. Actually, that's okay. interesting now that I think about it. It's been yellow for the past like two years. <laughs> fun <laughs> things in my calendar have been colored yellow, and that's perfect as it turns out, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it'll be good. We'll put a link down, and that way people can, you know, maybe learn about what drives them and also how to keep their life in balance the same way that Abel does. Yeah. What was Allison, by the way? Did she take yellow. the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's I yellow. Think she's balancing you. That's exactly <laughs> she's why. She's going fun all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's awesome. So, let's see. Now, if you could meet anybody in the, the world alive today, who would it be? I guess this one's a little bit loaded, um, but I think it would be really cool to peel back all of the craziness that's around it, but just like sit down, have a coffee, no pressure with President Obama, because uh -huh. I bet he has a lot of really interesting stories to tell, and I'd be interested in what they are. Yeah, <laughs> he could he could share a lot of information. I'm sure he's he's, he's looking very tired. I, I think he's, he's just like a hard... pretty gassed. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious as to like what's the thing that's doing it? Is it the aliens that we don't know about? Is it the Republicans, <laughs> or is it something completely it different that we can't we even know. conceive of? Yeah, what's uh, that? It could be his wife for all we know. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. true. We haven't seen much of that lately. No. Okay, this is a fun one because I know that you enjoy this also. So where would you go on your, I'm going to say next dream vacation, because I know that you've recently taken and you do enjoy vacationing. So where would you go on your dream vacation? Besides space? Yeah, besides yes. space. <laughs> <laughs> what do you buy a ticket to now? <laughs> I haven't gone on an African safari yet. Uh, and you guys have, right? We've been to Africa, Africa, but we have not gone on an African safari, you know, tur uh, tourist we were safari. We were looking at people. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well, we should all go to Africa and go on a safari. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay. That's great. I can add that to our list of vacations that we're planning. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Right before the moon. Already written on that. Yeah. I actually have a couple camps that have asked us to come and play. So. Take a look. Cool. At it. That's awesome. Um. And now there was a couple of things that you wanted to talk about here that we want that we want to make sure that we get into the interview. Um, let's talk a little bit about fasting. You know, this is something that you know. Again, when people watching the show right now. You know, let's talk a little bit about what your belief is nutritionally. You know, they'll talk about paleo or however you want to, you know, put your yeah. nutritional belief a little bit. And let's just kind of dig into who you are and what you believe in, um, just so the people watching now can, can get to know you if they don't already. Sure. So the short story is uh, make your food as delicious as possible. And the best way to do that, like actually delicious, not like trick your brain delicious. And that the best way to do that is with... Uh, real foods that have been properly prepared that we've been eating for a really long time. Because when you um, when you get past you know blasting your palate with all sorts of chemicals and fake foods, you start to appreciate that weird foods are actually really really good. And I know you guys have a long <laughs> history of eating all sorts of crazy stuff, but um, you know, to me, eating bone broth with a little bit of salt and and garlic or drinking, I should say, is like absolutely freaking delicious and yeah. and eating cayenne and you got me <laughs> yeah exactly and we we ate um chicken hearts wrapped in bacon the other night which sounds totally weird to most people but like i love stuff like that so getting back to our roots of not necessarily running around um with the Flintstones in the, in the caveman age, but just like a few generations back going, hooking into those traditions that we all used to know and love about how to create our food and, and what foods uh, we should eat. But it's, it gets really interesting when you don't just look at the food, but also the way that we live and, uh, and the history of different meals and even what we called them is a lot different from the way that we're living right now. So we all kind of understand that we eat three meals a day and then that's even been pushed a little bit 
further in the past few decades by you know bodybuilding and shake companies and and protein bar companies and the rest of it and whatever saying that you need to eat every two hours or thirty minutes or five minutes or else all your muscles are going to fall off and you're going to get no <laughs> results and <laughs> you're going to have a heart attack or whatever. Um, when you look back at the history of how, how we actually used to live and eat, breakfast didn't wasn't even a word for like most cultures and civilizations for a really really long time, um, and and a lot of cultures would eat one maybe two meals a day and so the idea that we need to constantly be shoving some sort of food down our gullets is really unprecedented when you look uh, at history and you compound that with the fact that we're exercising or, or moving much less than we ever have and you have uh, a recipe for absolute disaster and that's kind of what we're looking at today not to say that everyone needs to go out and exercise six hours a day but at the same time like you guys said, sitting down is pretty much the worst thing you can do for your body, and that's what people do uh, pretty much every day. From They just go from chair to chair to chair. And so the way that I live my life is, is fundamentally different from that, and I, I really enjoy it. And I think I'm a, a heck of a lot more positive and, uh, and productive than I used to be living the other way, going from chair to chair. Uh, and so what that looks like to me now is I've been... This morning I was at a coffee shop getting a bunch of work done um, and that was after I took the dog for a walk and, and did a little bit of light exercise and uh, I just went up to one of the counters and didn't use the chair and so I was you know like typing a bunch of stuff out for my new book proposal um, and when you're standing the thoughts just kind of like come to you you don't get that kind of like sagginess in your head that you um, that inevitably comes when you're staring, staring at a screen for too long so I went from uh, you know, standing in the morning to standing at the coffee shop to standing now doing interviews and I have a couple of meetings after this and I actually haven't eaten anything yet today and it's uh, 2.30 here. So right. that's, for me, pretty pretty common. I don't tend to eat until the end of the day. I kind of like that experience of during the day you work or you do stuff and you're up and about and you don't have time to really worry about food that much and that works for me really well right now. And then at the end of the day, you get together and you feast, and that's what you guys experienced or saw when we all went out to dinner, and we like pretty much ordered everything on the menu, and that's that's usually the way that it goes. And uh, I think that when you set it up that way, you really you have no choice but to truly enjoy your food. And I think that's if people want the secret of all of this, it's really about the enjoyment of the experience of of nourishing your body when you when you appreciate the art of that then you start reaching out for weird foods and things that will you know we got uh, two orders I think of bone marrow when we were yeah, at so that dinner. Delicious. Good. We're and it was going so there. good. We're, we're going taking there, the like, bones and <laughs> throwing them back like yeah. this. I know that was great. We have photos of that actually they're kind of funny. You? Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm it's, never running for a Senate. <laughs> yeah, no, we we definitely love that kind of stuff, and it also makes us so that you have some communal time. And we like talking about the fact that people should be sitting down and having discussions, nourishing your brain, yeah. nourishing your relationships at the same time that you're nourishing your bodies. It it shouldn't be a you know television time, and the fact that they're even in restaurants now, they have televisions even popping up, and that is yeah. really sad. Oh, I sad reflection that. on our communities. Yeah, I hate when you're sitting at a restaurant and they've got a TV behind you and a TV to the left of you, and it's, you know, it's just it takes really away from the ability to have the conversation and the connection with the food and the person that you're eating with, and uh, it's a it's a big pet peeve of mine. Now, our 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 belief system in in nutrition is very much aligned, you know. So again, some of the people watching may be like, "What's he talking about? That I'm not afraid of fat and isn't fat bad for us?" So you know, just just again, we love what we call rich food, you refer to it as real food, and of course real food is exactly kind of where people start. It's, it's eating the things that your grandparents and their grandparents and their grandparents might have eaten. And in today's world, of course, we talk about that, you know, we call it rich food because we want it to be non-genetically modified, non-pesticide laden real food. So other than that, it's basically the same thing. But you don't have a problem with um, eating fat or um, protein or, or Carbohydrates. It's really just getting rid of the processed foods and and what, th what kind of things do you think people should stay away from? Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, as far as food is concerned. As a general rule, the farther it is away from what would have existed and thrived in its own natural environment, the better. So um, 
my approach is is all based around that wild principle. So if you're eating an animal, that animal should have recently been alive and well and thriving. And what we see today is that most animals, if we choose to eat animal foods, are not coming from that world. They're coming from a sick, diseased, pump with antibiotics and chemicals type world. And that translates directly to your own body. So the wild diet approach is such that you're eating uh, animal and plant foods that were recently alive and well. And so uh, there are exceptions. You know, um, we don't unfortunately live in the same world that our ancestors did that was clean and not totally um, blasted with different kinds of chemicals. And there are hundreds and thousands of those that, that we could get into, but it's not really worth thinking about. We can all, I think, agree that right now we live in a polluted world in all sorts mm -hmm. of different ways. And so um, you, that also um, is combined with the fact that because of the way that we're farming today um, and incorrect ways that we used to farm as well, our soils have been depleted and a lot of the, the um, vegetables and produce that we're eating don't carry the same amount of nutrients that they used to uh, in them. So using cutting edge technology to kind of fill in the gaps in our nutrition using um, a, a solid supplementation plan is really important as well as uh, you can kind of fight fire with fire by using technology against itself. Um, and what I mean by that is, is a lot of times technology is moving forward at the expense of our own health. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there are these other little technologies that are uh, popping up um, all beside this huge technology that allows us to kind of take this, which was moving forward for technology's own sake, and align it with our own health. And so an example of that would be uh, like a free app for your computer called Flux, which at the end of the day, it pulls the blue light out of your monitor screen. And what that does is allows you to actually release melatonin as if it were sundown, even if you're on technology after uh, sundown, so that you can sleep more soundly during the, during the night. And so there are so many different little examples of that, but I think it's really cool when we start to see these little companies um, starting to do some really powerful things that uh, that uh, lets us uh, exist in this present world and actually still be healthy, even if you're wearing silly glasses every once in a while, <laughs> as I want to do. <laughs> yeah. No, we. I mean, obviously, we agree. You know, that's why we created nutrients was because we wanted to basically upgrade it and make it so that we could deal with this environment that we're living in. And even after we wrote Naked Calories, and even after we updated Naked Calories. We're still like doing so much more research and all the extra ways we didn't even include in the first two books because now with all the toxins and all the pesticides, there's so much new data about how much more we're coming into contact with every day. And so the old argument of you can get everything from your diet, not only was it out the window then when people first started saying that to us, but now it's like completely chaotic to even think yeah. that because yeah. this is a different world. It's not even close to what our grandparents dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. And you can use that for good as well, um, because what that means is we can also get, you know, like fermented cod liver oil and order it from Amazon to pretty much anywhere in the world. And so that's pretty cool, right? You can get these rich foods that, you know, if I lived in New Hampshire, even a generation ago, that wouldn't have been possible. You know, my parents' generation wouldn't have been able to do anything like that. Maybe there was some sort of crazy mail order <laughs> catalog that they could have gotten <laughs> some way. But yeah, it's bizarre. You know, they, didn't have, they, they didn't have that. And so now we do. So you can you can kind of stack the deck by making sure you're getting all of those, I hate the word superfoods, but like those those rich foods, those those foods that are totally packed with nutrition that, are, that we wouldn't otherwise have access to in our own communities. Um, I think that if you combine that with a local approach, getting most of your foods locally, and then you get those superfoods from wherever you can get them, I think that's a really solid strategy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's absolutely, and that's what we I mean, we try to always talk about. We, our belief system is basically an ancestral diet that uh, relates to the seasons, and this is again what we saw when we traveled to. Uh, to all those 130 <laughs> countries around the world and live with those people and that's exactly what they were doing. They were eating the way that their ancestors ate and that nature you know, allowed them to eat. So you, know, you mentioned a, a word call, called environmental design. Let's talk a little bit about that and what you mean by that when you say it. Yeah, that's just a fancy term for the world that exists around you, which most people kind of assume is what's there, but you really can engineer that for your own success. And so an example of that 
that I tend to use is if you have Ben and Jerry's in your freezer and you've had a really hard day working all day or whatever, um, your brain knows that it's there and it's kind of tugging at you all day. And you can, you can avoid it probably for the majority of the day, but it's like sapping a little bit of your willpower and you only have so much. So by the end of the day, um, <laughs> especially if something really rough happens, as it always does, or uh -huh. someone ticks you off or, um, or you're short on time, or you're just really hungry, then of course you're going to go and reach for that Ben and Jerry's and you're going to probably eat the whole thing. Um, and you're not really going to think much about it. Right? It's not going to be something that's planned. You're not going out to an indulgent dinner that happens to have really good ice cream. It's like, no, you're just pulling it out of the fridge and you're shoving it into your mouth, probably not even putting it into a bowl. And right. that's what a lot of people experience. Um, but if Ben and Jerry's is not there, then at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> you either make something yourself or you have to go through the process of putting on your shoes and driving to the store and picking out Ben and Jerry's and paying for it and then driving back to the house and then you know opening it up and then shoving it down your gullet and that is something that most people are too lazy to do so <laughs> what you have to do is like play with your own laziness and and use it against your bad habits and the way that you can do that is by um, not just taking away the bad things or making it slightly more inconvenient for you to do those bad behaviors that you know will make you fat or sick or uh, something else that you don't desire. Uh, an example on the other side of that is, um, as I've said, I'm a musician and so I really like to nurture the habit of playing music. I know that it's really good for um, the way that I think, relaxing, um, getting rid of stress and also opening myself up to new ideas and creativity. And so on every floor of my house I have guitars that are that are out that I can see. And so everyone experiences this over the course of the day or the night or the morning and they're just like Huh, I have five minutes. I wonder what I'm going to do. And so if there are remotes everywhere and there are TVs everywhere that are, you know, just screaming at you, it's like, oh, I guess I'll check the news and see, <laughs> I guess I'll check the bad news and see who's died today or see what <laughs> terrible thing is going on. And then you're totally bummed out after, you know, five minutes. Or you can have a guitar out or if, if you like sketching little notes to yourself or drawing cartoons, you can draw cartoons or you can have a book that's always out, the, the book that you're reading hopefully, not the seven books that you're reading, but that <laughs> one, it's waiting for you. Um, and so you can do that with, with good habits and bad ones, but what you want to do is, like I said, make bad habits inconvenient for yourself and make good habits really convenient for yourself. Put them out there, let your eyes see them, and then you'll be drawn to them in a really cool way. And there's all sorts of data that points to how much you can change your life with these sorts of things, but I think it's one of those little hacks that a lot of people haven't really harnessed yet. But if, for people who are listening or watching right now, if there's one thing that you see that's a bad habit, put it away. You can even just like put it in a cupboard, and it's incredible how much you just stop thinking about it anymore. Yeah. Um, another really good example of how you can do that and kind of clean up your brain is if you're looking at a computer screen right now, I bet behind it, there's a desktop that's cluttered with all sorts of different icons and Word <laughs> documents and pictures and other weird stuff. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Take your mouse. Select almost everything except for your hard drive. <laughs> and then make a new folder. Drag it all into there and just put the date on it. And then when, every time you look at your desktop, it's going to be totally clean. And if you need whatever you had, you have to go into that folder to see the mess that you made. But... Cleaning up your messes really allows you to, to, to focus, be present, and that's what allows you to be really productive and happy. So it's just I, a way of setting things up for success. That's right. Yeah, I love that idea. So you can kind of design your own environment. One, getting rid of the things that you may tempt you, and two, putting those putting things in your way that you want to be tempted by, like that guitar sitting behind you there. Exactly. <laughs> that's now, exactly right. Now, I don't, you know what? I've never seen you play guitar. I know you're... You haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna have to change that. Yeah, on, our, okay, on our next vacation to space, okay. I will bring my guitar and play you guys a concert. We're gonna have to tie you down to it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a deal. Now I know if somebody, some people watching right now are gonna be asking, what's the name of that dog behind you in that photo of yours? Her name is Bailey, and she's an absolute terror. <laughs> <laughs> now, what and actually, this is cool. So, um. George Bryant is the one who took this photo. He he stayed with me during last Paleo FX actually, and uh, 
And after he always does this, whenever he, you know, stays with me or, or whatever, he will, a couple of weeks later, I'll get this package. Usually I'll get like three packages from him and it'll be full of all sorts of amazing, crazy stuff like crock pots or, or, you know, custom <laughs> framed pictures. And this was one of the things I didn't even like know that he took this picture and two weeks after he stayed with me, he sent it to me and it's, you know, a beautiful picture of my dog out in the back. And so it just comes every time I look at it or see myself, you know, looking at it <laughs> as a picture, right. it just makes me a little bit happy and hopefully it makes other people happy too. Yeah, right. surrounding yourself with photos is a really good, is another one thing, thing that you can do to make yourself smile and relax. We actually have a lot of pictures of our travels around the house and sometimes we'll literally, and it's not like either of us is forgetting where we took them, but we'll literally just spend like an hour walking around and remembering and telling stories of what we've done in these different places just because that's one of the ways that we really like to let go and relax. Yeah. That's environmental design right there. That's there you it. go. We didn't even know what it meant at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are already pros. <laughs> well, I guess there's one more question that we'll leave off with. Yeah, so let's talk about this, you know, and this is kind of just, it will kind of sum everything up. So what's your hope for the future of food and health? I hope that we take the huge amount of people who are getting worse right now and move them to that small clan of people that we have right now, that small tribe that's getting better. Yeah. And, uh, and what I do, the reason that I have my business and, and do my show and write books is because I want to take this huge group and put them into this one because the more people we have who are <laughs> doing good stuff, being healthy, uh, the more we're going to change the world for the better. And you know, with, with food, one of the sneakier things that I'm doing with all of this is that I, I've always just wanted to change the world in a positive way and I've tried it with, that's why I've done so many different weird things like being a musician, working with the government working with Fortune 500s, alternative energy, um, Department of Education, music and art all over. The best way that I found to enact change is um, is by changing people's relationship with themselves, with which starts with food. And when you do that, when when people believe that they have to eat food that comes from a healthy world, uh, that comes from healthy animals and healthy plants, you have to believe. In, uh, in small farmers. You have to believe in eating local food and what that's doing is building the infrastructure that this world desperately needs to survive into the future as opposed to what we have right now. And so it's just kind of like my sneaky little way of getting in there um, and, and really using a hobby um, of mine which is health and, and high performance and, and fitness and the rest of it to help other people kind of get to that level where they're feeling awesome because once you feel awesome and once you lose that excess weight or whatever or reach your fitness goals then you feel like you can achieve more and change the world for the better so as long as you're fighting for the good guys I think that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We're well, gonna need Wonder Twin shirts or something like that. <laughs> right. Team, you know, team uniforms or something. <laughs> team awesome. If people want to find out a little bit more about the Wild Diet, where can they do that at? Easiest way to find me is to go to fatburningman.com, and if you sign up for my mailing list there, uh, you get all sorts of free goodies, including a, a video course that walks you through the basics of how to get started with this dietary uh, and fitness approach. And also, Fat Burning Man is really easy to find on uh, on iTunes, and my apps are easy to find as well under Fat Burning Man on both Apple and Android and Amazon too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, I can't even say thank you enough. I mean, well, we could go on with you for hours because we just like talking to you. And you've got <laughs> so much to share with everyone. So I hope that everyone really does take you up on it, goes to the website, signs up for your newsletters, and make sure to stay in touch with all the awesome things that you bring out to, to really make this world a better place. Yeah, I mean, Abel is, is, a, is a part of a very small group of people that we really respect. So, again, I can't stress enough, make sure you go to his website, check out his stuff. Um, Abel knows what he's talking about. We absolutely believe in everything that you're it. doing. Yeah, he lives it. He breathes it. And uh, so just an all-around fantastic guy. Thank you very much for being on the show today, Abel. Thanks so much for having me, guys. <laughs> and for all of you watching right now, uh, we just want to remind you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out our new website, a brand new website we just launched, check that out. And you can also sign up for our newsletters there. So until next time, um, remember that life's a journey. Discover how. We'll see you then. See you later. Bye.